All right, we're going to take a look at what else we need to do in the animal unit. So we've already covered animal cell organelles and their function. So this is just a quick review if you want to look things over as far as where they're located and what each organelle does. We also just finished our cell respiration. So this one definitely refer back to the other PowerPoint titled Cell Respiration that you can find on Blackboard. This, that'll help you through this material. And now we're going to continue to just the general characteristics of an animal. So what is an animal? An animal, multicellular, which you know has more than one cell, eukaryotic, meaning the cells are complex and have organelles, and a heterotroph, whose cells lack cell walls. So heterotroph, quick review, means we have to get our food. We can't make it like plants do. So a few essential functions that animals have. So feeding, like I mentioned, we're heterotrophs, so we have to feed on food to get it. We do something called respiration. So we breathe in oxygen and we release carbon dioxide. We also have a circulatory system, which helps with circulation of blood through our bodies, and also the diffusion across our membranes of our cells. We do excretion, which I'm sure you're all familiar with that, is a byproduct of metabolism. So we eat food, we break it down, we have to get rid of the waste. We also have a response system, so your nervous system, why you can feel it when someone taps you on the shoulder, or why your brain acts the way it does, or works the way it does. We also move, so skeleton, muscles, and reproduction, and mostly sexual reproduction, although some organisms can be asexual. Alright, so how are they classified? So there's two ways. We have invertebrates and vertebrates. So your invertebrates are those that have no backbone or vertebral column. This is actually 95% of animals. So I'm sure you're very familiar with some of these examples. Insects, worms, jellyfish, sea stars. None of these animals have a backbone. Our other category is vertebrates. So these ones have a backbone, and this is only 5%, but also the ones that you're probably most familiar with, any of the fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, or basically the chordates. So there's two different support systems. Invertebrates have something called an exoskeleton. So if you see this picture of the beetle, it has a hard outside covering that protects the inside of the body, or all the important things that are inside. Vertebrates are a little bit different. They have something called an endoskeleton. Endo means inside, and it supports the body, but from the inside. This is also where all of your muscles attach. So your muscles are going to attach to your bones, and this will form your endoskeleton. All right, so your symmetry, you have three main types of symmetry, which is going to be your body plans of your organisms. So. Symmetry in general, just a similarity among the body structures of animals. So there's three types, asymmetry, radial, and bilateral. So if you look below, your sponge is going to be your asymmetry. There's really not a way you can divide a sponge, and it's going to be equal on both sides. Jellyfish, on the other hand, is a radial symmetry. So if you look at the jellyfish, it shows you two different planes, but you could honestly draw a plane anywhere on that jellyfish, and you'd be able to divide it into equal parts. The bilateral symmetry is going to be like your hummingbird. This is where you can really only divide one way for it to be equal on both sides. So if you look at that picture, from the beak all the way down to the tail is going to be the only place that that can be divided and have equal symmetry on both sides. Your bilateral symmetry also has a little bit more to it in that animals that exhibit this type of symmetry are usually more mobile. They have an anterior and a posterior end, which we'll discuss in just a minute, and they show something called cephalization. So you might remember what this means from that animal lab that we did. And basically, it's just the concentration of nerve endings or nerve tissue resulting in a brain or something similar to a brain functioning in an animal. This is going to be your cephalization. So animals that have bilateral symmetry are much more likely to show cephalization. So let's look at our different types of symmetry in a couple examples. So first we have a sea anemone. So this type of symmetry is going to be radial. This one can be divided really on any plane. It's going to be equal. It's very similar to the jellyfish example that we looked at. Moving on, we have a lizard. 
he is going to have bilateral symmetry. So really, if you look right at the front of his face, you can divide him right down the middle of his chest, and he's going to be equal on both sides. Same front legs, back legs, divide the tail in half. He's bilateral. If you were to divide him across the middle of his back, that's not symmetrical at all. There's going to be the front end and the back end, which don't match if you were to do symmetry. This next one is a sea sponge. So we already touched on this a little bit in the intro, but a sea sponge doesn't have any symmetry, which is a little deceiving when you look at this picture because you could say it could be divided in one way or the other, but honestly, it's not the same on any side. So this one exhibits asymmetry. Another example, we have a tiger, bilateral. So once again, looking straight at the front of the face, divide right down the middle, it's going to be the same on both sides. And our final example, we have a starfish. So this one, you could originally say bilateral. You look at the star, you kind of arrange it, and then divide down the middle. But it can be divided in any way, because no matter what, it's going to be the same on any side that you divide it on. So this one is your radial symmetry. Last thing, let's talk a little bit about body arrangement or the surfaces of the body. So a term I'm sure most of you are familiar with is dorsal. You think about a whale or a shark or a dolphin, they have a dorsal fin. Well, fish do too. So if you look at this fish here, his top fin is his dorsal fin, and it's on the dorsal side of his body. So the dorsal side of your body is your back, which makes your belly, or the underneath of an animal, the ventral side. So we have dorsal on the back, ventral on the belly. Then we have the front and the back. So the front of an animal is referred to as the anterior end. If you look at the word anterior, just an in general means before. Then we have the tail, or the posterior end. And post means after. So anterior is the front, posterior is the back. And just a quick review of that in written form. So dorsal, your back or upper surface. Ventral is your belly or your lower surface. And then the anterior is your head or front end, and posterior is your tail or hind end, which is opposite of the head.